Ever wonder why listening to your favorite song can instantly flip your mood from Monday morning existential crisis to I can conquer the world with a kazoo, baby? Or why your grandmother insists that classical music makes plants grow better while death metal apparently gives them anxiety attacks, huh? <laughs> well, buckle up because today we are diving into the scientifically proven superpower that is music therapy where sound waves become healing waves and your playlist might just be the best medicine you will ever need. So let's figure how music literally rewires your brain, fixes your body and might even make you a more tolerable human being huh? if you have a chance. Spoiler alert, it's not just about feeling good, it's about actual measurable physical changes in your neural pathways, hormone levels and even your immune system. Who knew that humming in the shower was basically DIY brain surgery? Let's start with the mind-blowing science behind what happens when music hits your brain. And I mean literally, boom, hits it. Sound waves are physical vibrations that create measurable changes in your grey matter faster than you can say neuroplasticity. Dr. Nina Krauss at Northwestern University discovered that musicians' brains are basically souped-up versions of regular brains. Their neural processing is faster, their memory is sharper and their ability to focus is enhanced. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like they've been running brain crossfit while the rest of the mortals have been doing elementary mental yoga. But here's the kicker, you don't need to be Beethoven to get these benefits. Studies using brain scans show that listening to music activates virtually every area of the brain simultaneously. We are talking about a full neural orchestra. The auditory cortex processes the sound, the motor cortex gets you moving, the limbic system floods you with emotions and the prefrontal cortex helps you make sense of it all. It's like your brain is throwing the world's most productive party and everyone's invited. But my favorite discovery? Music therapy can literally grow your brain. I guess that's why my head looks so big. <laughs> A 2013 study published in the Journal of Neuroscience found that stroke patients who listened to music for two hours daily showed increased growth in neural networks compared to those who didn't. That's right, your brain is basically hitting the gym every time you listen to your favorite music. Now let's talk about the Mozart effect. Is it fact, fiction or just marketing genius? Yes, let's address the elephant in the concert hall, the infamous Mozart effect. You've probably heard that playing classical music makes babies smarter, students more focused and cows produce better milk. <laughs> but what does the science actually say? The original 1993 study by Rauscher, Shaw and Kai found that college students scored slightly higher on spatial temporal reasoning tests after listening to Mozart's sonata in D major scale. But, and this is a big but, as in but. The effect lasted only 10 to 15 minutes and it wasn't about general intelligence, just spatial reasoning. Somehow this modest finding got transformed into classical music makes you smarter which led to a billion dollar industry of baby Mozart products and governors mandating classical music in schools. It's like the world's most expensive game of scientific telephone. Uh, here's where it gets even more interesting. While the Mozart effect has marketed is largely mythical, music education and therapy do have profound cognitive benefits. Dr. Laurel Trainer's research at McMaster University shows that babies who participate in interactive music classes develop better communication skills and show more sophisticated brain responses to music by age one, as young as one. The real magic isn't in listening passively to Mozart, it's in actively engaging with music, learning an instrument, singing or participating in music therapy that creates neural pathways, improves working memory and enhances executive function. So while playing classical music to your plants might not turn them into botanical geniuses, it certainly won't hurt. And your neighbours might appreciate the upgrade from death metal for sure, huh? Now let's talk about music in medical settings. Let's get serious. Let's get serious about the medical applications of music therapy because this is where things get genuinely, genuinely miraculous. In hospitals across the world, music therapists are achieving results that seem almost magical, previously impossible. Premature babies in natal ICUs who listen to lullabies, gain weight faster, have more stable vital signs and leave the hospital sooner. When I hold you close to me Tenderly, as the sky is blue. 
Dr. Joanne Leovi at Beth Israel Medical Center found that live lullabies reduced parental stress and improved infant outcomes so significantly that many hospitals now employ musicians alongside medical staff. Music therapy can assist babies and families during a NICU admission by a whole range of applications. It very much is a family-centered practice. So not only are we working with the young babies, children and their families, regulating heart rate, improving saturation and respiratory rates, and to help promote a more calm, nurturing and relaxing environment for a child and their families. For pain management, music therapy is proving to be remarkably effective too. A meta-analysis of 51 studies published in the Cochrane database found that music therapy reduces pain intensity, decreases anxiety and lowers the need for pain medication. Patients listening to music during surgery require less anesthesia and recover faster. It's like your earbuds are miniature anesthesiologists when they listen to the right music. But perhaps most fascinating is music's impact on neurological rehabilitation. Research on neurological music therapy shows that rhythmic patterns can help stroke patients relearn how to walk. The steady beat provides a neural scaffold that helps damaged brain cells rebuild motor pathways. Parkinson's patients who freeze while walking can often move normally when music is playing. The rhythm literally unlocks their movement. And here's something that might blow your mind. Patients with severe dementia who can't remember their own names can often sing entire songs from their youth word for word. Music seems to access memories stored in parts of the brain that Alzheimer's hasn't touched, creating magical moments of clarity and connection for patients and families. Speaking of magical healing properties of music, let's talk about Indian classical music which has been prescribing specific ragas for specific ailments for over 5000 years. Ancient Indian texts describe ragas that can cure headaches, aid digestion, reduce anxiety and even help with fertility. Sounds like pseudoscience, right? Well, hold on to your tanpuras, it's not. Some of our ghazals and love songs are often in uh, Rag Yaman or Rag Yaman Kalyan. Rag Malkos, described for high blood pressure in ancient texts, has been shown to lower heart rate and blood pressure in clinical studies. The concept of Rag Chikitsa or Raga therapy is based on the idea that different musical frequencies affect different chakras or energy centers in the body. While the chakra part may make scientists uncomfortable, uh, they won't believe its authenticity. The frequency part is definitely scientifically sound. Because different frequencies do affect brainwave patterns. That is a measurable fact, not mystical mumbo jumbo. So let's talk about music therapy's impact on mental health because this is where the research gets really exciting. And the results are often better than traditional treatments. We all know that depression affects over 264 plus million people worldwide, but music therapy is showing remarkable results in clinical trials. A study published in the British Journal of Psychiatry found that adolescents receiving music therapy showed significantly greater improvement in depression symptoms compared to those receiving traditional talk therapy alone. The key seems to be that music engages multiple brain systems simultaneously, creating more neural pathways for healing. For anxiety disorders, music therapy activates the parasympathetic nervous system, your body's rest and digest mode. Dr. Suzanne Hanser's research at Berkeley College shows that group drumming sessions reduce cortisol levels by up to 30%, 30% and boost immune function. Apparently, banging on drums isn't just cathartic, it's clinically therapeutic. But here's where it gets personal. As someone in the music industry, I witnessed firsthand how music can be both a refuge and a risk for mental health. The same sensitivity that makes great artists can also make them vulnerable to depression and anxiety. However, music therapy provides tools for emotional regulation that many artists find more accessible than traditional therapy. Autism spectrum disorders show particularly promising responses to music therapy. Children with autism often have enhanced musical perception and music therapists use this strength to develop communication skills, social interaction and emotional expression. It's like finding a secret doorway into connection for minds that process the world differently. As for the nitty-gritty biochemistry of why music makes us feel so good, 
When you listen to music you love, your brain releases a cocktail of feel-good chemicals that would make any pharma company jealous. Dopamine, the same neurotransmitter involved in food, sex and addictive drugs. Yes, music has that same effect on the brain. This explains why you get actual chills from that perfect musical moment. It's literally a neurochemical reaction. You know when you hear something you love and your hair stands? Wow! Then there's oxytocin, the bonding hormone. Group musical activities like singing in a choir or playing in a band increases oxytocin levels, enhancing social bonding and trust. This is why music brings people together so powerfully. We are literally becoming chemically attached to each other through shared musical experiences. Music also decreases cortisol, your primary stress hormone. Just 30 minutes of music listening can reduce cortisol levels significantly. It's like having a reset button for your stress response system. No wonder we instinctively reach for our headphones during difficult times. Block out the world, listen to your favorite music. Problem solved. But perhaps most importantly, music increases BDNF, that is brain-derived neurotropic factor, a protein that promotes the growth and survival of neurons. It's like fertilizer for your brain. This explains why music therapy can help with everything from depression to dementia to developmental delays. So how can you harness these scientifically proven benefits in your daily life? Let me give you some evidence-based musical prescriptions. For better sleep, research shows that listening to slow, soft music 60 to 80 beats per minute for 30 minutes before bed improves sleep quality. Classical music, ambient soundscapes or slow jazz works best. Sorry Headbangers, Metallica is not the sleep prescription music. <laughs> For workout performance, upbeat music with 120 to 140 beats per minute can increase endurance by up to 15%. The key is matching the tempo to your desired heart rate. It's like having a personal trainer in your earbuds. <laughs> For focus and productivity, baroque music around 60 beats per minute or instrumental music without lyrics can enhance concentration without being distracted. Lyrics engage the language centers of your brain which compete with cognitive tasks. So, when you want therapy, it's best to listen to music without lyrics. For pain relief, slow, melodic music you personally find beautiful activates the brain's natural pain-killing systems. The key word is personally. Your grandmother's polka connection might work for her, but it may be torture for you. So, you have to decide what works for you for pain relief. For emotional regulation, create playlists that mirror and then shift your emotional state. Start with music that matches how you feel, then gradually transition to music that represents how you want to feel. You know, like so if you're feeling sad, start with sad music. And if you want to feel happy, then from sad music, you progress to happy music and your emotional state will shift accordingly. It's like emotional GPS for your mood, you know. You can navigate your brain through the music. So, from rewiring stroke patients' brains to reducing premature baby stress, from ancient ragas, healing modern ailments to dopamine driven musical highs we've discovered that music therapy isn't just feel good stuff it's hardcore neuroscience with a catchy beat the evidence is overwhelming music is medicine it's a non-invasive side effect free treatment that's often more effective than traditional interventions and the best part it's accessible to everyone. You don't need a prescription, insurance approval or a medical degree. Just years and an open mind. But remember, while music therapy is powerful, it is not a replacement for professional medical care when needed. Think of it as a complement to, not a substitute for traditional treatment. Your playlist is powerful, but it's not omnipotent. In the future, sometime we'll also explore how different cultures use music for healing from Aboriginal Dreamtime songs to African drumming ceremonies because apparently humans everywhere figured out that sound waves are magic. They just called it different names. So this is Suchitra Krishnamurti signing off on the music stories on the Suchitra Krishnamurti show, reminding you that your brain is listening, your body is responding and your playlist might just be the best medicine you never knew you needed. Until next time, keep your frequencies healing and your melodies therapeutic. I'll see you next week, same day, same time. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Please. The music stories with Suchitra. The deeps, the beats, the melody.